Oh, oh my God, I'm so, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I mean, this all. Oh. Everyone thinks you're crazy. I don't think you're crazy. People think you're a pedophile. I don't think you're a pedophile at all. I don't think he's a pedophile at all. The charges against him are totally false. They're totally false. Oh my. No, that was amazing. That was so good. It was so good. The best part is Matt Gates's face. As he utters the word pedophile, it was like smile, like giant smile, ear to ear. Gates is feeling himself, and then he hears the word pedophile, and he's like, "Oh no, 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 get off it, get off it, no, 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 let's not mention that." Yeah, you know, this guy is doing it right. Uh, oftentimes on the left, we try to engage with these folks with serious fact based nuanced conversation with what they really deserve is to be mocked and derision. And uh, so this homie actually gets the tenor of how we need to be dealing with the <laughs> Matt Gateses and the Marjorie Taylor Greens of the world. Just clown these fools, oh, I, I love it. I love it too. My favorite thing is how Marjorie Taylor Greene is just oblivious throughout this whole thing. Like look at, look at Matt Gates. he's like, oh no. But Marjorie Taylor Greene is like, I'm smiling for the cameras. Everything's great. What do you mean, pedophile? Everything's wonderful. I mean, I'm a total believer in QAnon conspiracy theories, but when I'm standing next to someone who might actually have, you know, abused his power and engaged in sexual misconduct with a minor, no, nah, it's totally fine. I'm totally oblivious to it. Big smiles. You legally speaking, there was no election fraud or no election corruption. Do you do, well, let's put it this way. Do you agree that 61 different federal and state courts, including eight judges that Donald Trump appointed himself to the federal bench, have rejected every claim of electoral well, I, corruption I or fraud I, that have been yeah, advanced? Do you I, agree with that? I, I don't, and the reason is those claims are not evaluated because in many of the circumstances you reference, jurisdiction was the principal question. So I think it requires a review of the procedure. Do you have process. any case authority in the land of those 61 cases or any other cases where a court has determined that there was electoral corruption or electoral fraud that materially uh, affected the outcome no. of the election in any state in the no, union. No court. Do you have which, one? Which I believe is a real failure of the judiciary. I think our, the Article Three courts failed our country by not exercising more jurisdiction over those questions. Yeah. Now, there's a difference in whether or not fraud existed and whether or not there's an adequate remedy. And I think also a number of those cases were kicked on remedies. Well, no court has said really that fraud existed, and so there's no remedy because there's no violation, right, Mr. Right, Gates. Right, but you can There's no violation, there's no fraud. That there Okay. No fraud if they didn't take up the question to review the facts okay. on jurisdiction or the, remedy. You know what? That might work on Steve Bannon's podcast, but that's not going to work in the Rules Committee of the United like States House of Representatives. Here. I'm sorry, Mr. Gates, forgive me. Yeah, let's see more of that from the Democratic Party, not just in regard to Donald Trump and his cronies, but in regard to actually fighting for legislation that would materially benefit Americans' lives. But I did really appreciate that moment because everything Raskin said there was true. And let's be very clear. In case after case, in court battle after court battle, the federal judges, including federal judges who were appointed by Donald Trump, were like, hey, can, all right, can you guys present your evidence for voter fraud? And in one situation, situation after the next, we have no evidence, not a shred of evidence. Even after telling the American people in Fox News interviews and Newsmax interviews and OAN interviews that they've got all this overwhelming evidence, they have failed to show a shred of it because it doesn't exist. In my previous discussions with service members and particularly officers, the number one issue that they raised to me with concern, often unable to speak publicly for fear of the type of retribution that Lieutenant Colonel Lohmeyer faced. They say that your stand down regarding extremism did not help our military, it hurt the military. And I, I wanna share with you that perspective that it caused service members to otherize one another, it impaired group cohesion. And interesting to me is that I've heard those sentiments most frequently from units that are majority minority. How should the Department of Defense think about critical race theory? I've read Mao Zedong, I've read, I've read Karl Marx, I've read Lenin, that doesn't make me a communist. So what is wrong with understanding, having some situational understanding about the country for which we are here to defend? And I personally find it offensive that we are accusing 
the United States military, our general officers, our commissioned, non-commissioned officers, of being, quote, woke or something else because we're studying some theories that are out there. That was started at Harvard Law School years ago, and it proposed that there were laws in the United States, antebellum laws prior to the Civil War, that led to a power differential with African Americans that were three quarters of a human being when this country was formed. And then we had a civil war and emancipation proclamation to change it. And we brought it up to the Civil Rights Act in 1964. It took another 100 years to change that. So look it, I do want to know. That was an open handed slap, boy. That's what that was. That was Mark Milley, General Mark Milley, shutting down the ridiculous right wing talking points that get recycled over and over again among GOP lawmakers and, of course, in the right wing media. Emma, what do you think? Well, I mean, it was incredibly gratifying, right? Look at that big <laughs> head shaking itself. Um, I mean, I, 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 I obviously I'm in favor of a lot of what was said there. And you know, I think the thing about critical race theory and the way you need to understand it is that it's it's really just a placeholder for Republicans to talk about any type of education that doesn't indoctrinate young people to being good little white capitalists who don't really question anything. Right. <laughs> um, and don't question their place in the world and don't question why uh, their black or brown classmates don't feel a certain way. And as you said, no one really understands what it is. And so anybody who may be on the fence to hear that coming from somebody in the military uniform, it has an authoritativeness and it's not, you know, some DSA member, not saying that in any pejorative way, but it's it's somebody who holds that position and doesn't traditionally speak that way. I think it really does have a lot of value. 